What's up, soldiers? Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com. Always a pleasure having you guys here in the kitchen with me. Yo, COVID has us under lockdown. So today we're pretending we're going to the beach. And on the way to the beach, we usually do these skirks. Pull aside for snacks. And one of those snacks is usually chow of some sort. And chow is sort of a, a spicy pickle made typically with mango or pineapple. Today, though, we're using pumsy tea or June plum. Stay tuned, you're gonna love this one, man. Spice, hey, summertime, you're gonna be. Mm -mm. Mm. Let's quickly run through the ingredients before we get started. I've got two limes, I've got a lemon. And these here are what we call salt prunes or salted prunes. And you would get them at the Asian market. The Chinese stores in the Caribbean, especially in Trinidad and Tobago, would sell these and they've been dried and salted and there's a sweet salty element to them. A red onion. I've got here three scotch bonnet peppers. I've probably just used two of them. I've got two, four, six cloves of garlic. We'll need some sea salt. We'll need some shadow benny. If you cannot get shadow benny, it's also called culantro. Um, if you cannot source that, use cilantro. In, in, in England, I guess you guys call it coriander. So, if you can't get this, try your, your local West Indian. So, if you cannot source it, Asian markets tend to have it as well. And here, the star of the show, the Pumpsi Tea or June Plum. And these are the green ones. You don't want the ripe ones, you want the green ones. And I have two, four, six, eight, about nine of them there. We'll need some water, we'll need some black pepper, but basically these are the ingredients here. Now with the pomsi tea or June plum, what you got to do is peel them and you're gonna take the stem off like that. And then you're gonna take your paring knife and remove the outer skin, maybe about, I don't even know, maybe two millimeters thick. You just want to get to this sort of fleshy area here. The thinner you go here, like if you go too shallow, you will see how green it is compared to how more lighter color. You really want to go a little bit deeper. That skin area can be a bit tart. And now here's the thing. You want tart in a good chow. A good chow is supposed to have the balance of salt, tartness, garlic, a little herbage. That is the, um, the shadow benny. And you need to have the heat. So those are the sort of combination. The sour, the garlic the scotch bonnet, the salt, all that come together. And in my humble opinion, you need some acid and that acid is gonna be that lemon juice and lime juice. So again, you take the top off, you can take the bottom off as well too. I might just drop some rubbish on the floor there so I gotta clean up after, but small thing. Just gonna peel them like so, yeah? I've peeled them all and I've washed them in cool water. And now here's the part that gets a little bit tricky. So if you want them dry, it might be easier for you to hold on to. I'm on as a veteran, I know what to do. And you're gonna take your paring knife and you're gonna go down until you hit the core. And the core, the center is sort of a spiny sort of, of core. And then you're gonna make a cut and then you're gonna go next to it on an angle, like so. And then you're gonna twist your knife until the piece comes off. See, like so, and as we as we go along, you'll see the spiny sort of core that I'm talking about. Now, one of the things we like doing as well when we're making this chow is to keep the core, and we're gonna keep some of the flesh on there as well too. So you notice I just skipped over. I'm just gonna go here, go here, and just make a triangle cut like so, if you wanted. If you wanted to go this way, you can certainly do that too because we want all that nice peppery stuff to get in everywhere. So you notice, I don't know if you guys can see, I'll, I'll, I'll clean up one and I'll show you in a second, but all you would do is cut it up. So we've got the pieces and we've got this here. This is the gem. This is the one that, you know, if you're a Chow Pyong, once that garlicky peppery juice gets in there, Man, you just want to suck and chew on that like no tomorrow. But anyhow, we're continuing. One down, another one down, and then we twist. We twist, yeah? See how we're pulling it out? Or like I said, you can go on an angle, on an angle, and just bring it back so. And this is basically what I meant when I said there's a sort of a spiny sort of interior. I don't know if you guys can see it well on camera, but these are really sharp. 
Well, it can be sharp. But, um, yeah, we brave like that, man. We go, <laughs> we rest in teeth on that. Don't study that. But this one I'm going to toss in the rubbish, though, because there's hardly any flesh on this. As I work through the last of the farm city here, I thought a good idea, a sort of a tip to share with you guys. Get a tea towel. Put a tea towel in your hand first. You know, like if you're shocking um, oysters, I was going to say the lobster. Um, just to protect your hand in case that paring knife bears down on you there. Uncle Chris ain't got no insurance on this thing here, so they'll be trying to sue him. I know all the youngs like to sue people and thing and thing, alright? So use a tea towel, but here we go. We're all ready now. It took about 10 minutes to get that, because you got to be careful. But listen to this crunch. Mmm. Keeping in mind that we will be using those salted prunes in here, I'm going to go somewhat light with the salt. And I'm using sea salt. You can use any salt you like. Depending on the tartness, because these can be notoriously tart, the plum city or June plum. Depending on the tartness, you will need more salt to sort of balance it up. So we've got that sea salt in there. So to that, I'm going to add some fresh ground black pepper. We want all of that salted prunes in there as well too. And I have a feeling the bowl is too small for us to do a little, a little mixing in here, but we will see. And then all you would do is crush the garlic in there. And I want all that garlic. Like I said, six cloves of garlic. You guys don't need to see me crush six cloves of garlic, but no, that is what is going into the mix here, yeah? Next up, we're gonna juice the limes. And that lemon in there. And my phone is ringing at the most inopportune time. And you know that's just the the nature of when you film in a home kitchen that phone is gonna ring so I do apologize for that but anyhow we're just gonna squeeze that juice up in there and the kitchen is already smelling wicked because when that, that lime juice kiss and I'm talking about French kiss kind of thing that garlic there Papa you know that thing smelling nice I'm gonna go ahead and juice the the other lime and the lemon in there Hold tight. I'm just going over the last piece of lemon here. And if all you have is lime or all you have is lemon, flex that. Don't go out and buy separate lime and lemon and stuff like that. Uncle Chris, just like the different um, flavor profiles I get from, from both of these citrus, yeah? Next up, we've got that shadow benny and we're just gonna chop that up really, really fine. So sort of shreds and already you're gonna get that vibrancy of that shadow benny flavor it's like to be honest with you it is like cilantro coriander on steroids in my humble opinion it is a much better hope and for those people who don't like coriander or cilantro you know some people they get that sort of soapy taste I think this is and I've never tried it because I <laughs> How can I? I don't get that sort of effect, but I believe you won't get that soapy taste. Correct me if I'm wrong down in the description of the video. In there, scotch bonnet pepper. I'm going to use two of them. I know I'm a guy all over three there. I like spicy, but the other people in this house don't really, they can't hardly eat. They cannot. Seeds and everything. Remember, we've talked about this on several occasions. Wear gloves. Wash your hands with soap and water after. You don't want to be touching your pigorino or your eyes or your skin or whatever with that scotch bonnet oil on your fingers. All right, now remember, let's talk about that for a second again. The center area here where that seeds, let me show you guys where the seeds are. This that's where most of the heat is going to be. We want that, but if you're a little shy when in the heat department, you can cut that out and discard it. Habanero, scotch bonnet, jalapeno, if you're into the moruga, scorpion and all them kind of extreme peppers, by all means, rock those. I man can't handle it. I mean, I can handle it, but I don't enjoy it. So, I ain't putting that in here. And we're almost done. All we need to do now, and I know you guys are watching some of the ingredients and you're thinking, salt prunes and chow. Listen, when I was introduced to that salt prunes and chow by David Wears down in Trinidad and Tobago, 
It was a friend of his who gave it to him. And he passed it on to us. Man, game changer. Red onion, you're thinking, why red onion? Chow now, we don't do it. Yeah, obviously, obviously granny and them never did it, but don't mean to say we cannot do it. Thinly sliced. And if you haven't guessed already, this is somewhat like a pickle. And you would use it with adult beverages. It's an accompaniment, an accompaniment to adult beverages. When I was a kid, there was no adult beverages involved, but I really like this. A nice little snack. And that's gonna go in here too. We'll need some water to pull everything together because we need liquid in here. But just look at the niceness. Whoosh! Look at Chris, boy. Real nice. And Zaya making a whole heap of noise in the living room there, boy. This boy always trying to jumpy people seeing you. I underestimated how much chow we ended up with here. I'm just going to empty everything into a bigger bowl. I'm going to run about one cup of cold water in here into the bowl as well. Basically all you would do is give everything a good mixy mix. <laughs> here it is ladies and gentlemen. I'm using a tablespoon. The, one of the funniest emails I ever received. Um, <laughs> During the lifetime of CaribbeanPod.com, someone told me she's been following me on YouTube for years. And she's about to unfollow me unless I stop using a tablespoon. It's about time I use a different spoon when I'm stirring stuff. Okay. <laughs> well, look at that niceness up here now. And so it's smelling good, boy. Hey, sir. What you want to do now, you want to grab some of these containers and you've seen me when I do chow recipes when I do ice cream recipes and you can find these on Amazon I ain't trying to promote Amazon eh? I'm rich enough at this, as it is fold that up in there put it in the fridge and allow it to consume me allow it to soak in there and hour or two you know you're enjoying some wicked spicy pickled what we call a chow uh, palm city Now, I'm going to put these into two containers, so I have to stay back some of the liquid because I want to be able to have the liquid in both of them. Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com. Always a pleasure having you guys here in the kitchen with me. Pom Cite Chow, spicy, garlicky, and a wonderful little herbal note as well. Always a pleasure having you guys here in the kitchen with me. Remember to hit subscribe if it's your first time watching me here on YouTube. And um, leave your comments down below. I'd like to get your take on things. And don't sleep on the um, salted prunes. That salted prunes there is pure niceness.